Hey guys, it's Daniel Sun. Welcome back to the channel, and we are back with our 1976 Fiat Turbo. Yes, Turbo. Now, in the previous video, we were talking about how to make this car a little bit safer by fixing the brakes because it has none. Also, by replacing the timing belt and the tires and fixing the drive shaft, so at least it doesn't explode when we decide to double the horsepower on this thing. On this video, we are going to talk about what modifications we're going to do, what parts we're are we going to use, and I got a table over there laid up with all the parts that we need. But before that, we're going to push this car on the lift. Yes, push. I don't want to start this car and drive it in the shop with no uh, brakes. Last thing I need is to bump into another car because I have no brakes. We're going to air up the tires. We're going to put it on the lift, and then we're going to go to this table and see all the goodies that we already have. We're still missing a bunch, but we got some goodies, and I'm going to show you on the table. So let's get started. So we got the car on the stall. Now, this is the table of all the stuff that I was talking about. I am gonna bring you in to show you in more detail, but uh, this is some of the parts, some of the tools that we're gonna use on this build. So uh, let's go ahead and see them you know, one by one. So let's go ahead and start with some of the tools that we're gonna use for the wiring. So right here, we got some wire strippers, we got some wire cutters, uh, some scissors, you know, sometimes for the heat shrink and stuff like that. Uh, just in case you made a mistake, these are really good for opening up the, heat shrink. Now this one right here is a very special tool. This actually comes from a company called Daniel's Machining Company, if I'm not mistaken. These are basically the type of crimpers that you would use on military aviation type wiring harnesses. It crimps a closed barrel uh, contact or socket or whatever you want to call it, pin. They are extremely good. I picked up this one cheap, actually used, because this thing brand new can cost as much as $500. Now I do have this one and I do have its big brother, which my buddy Eric is uh, borrowing right now, and some wire strippers that come from a company called Ideal, which are extremely good for stripping wires. He also borrowed them because he's helping uh, another YouTuber down in uh, Florida with their build. So he needed those tools to be able to complete the harness on that car. Now over here we have another crimper. This is more for your WeatherTech style pins, the open barrels. And we got different jaws for different type of connectors. And again, this I just got this one from uh, Blue Point. So we're gonna be using this one a lot probably because uh, this contact is gonna be much more common and much cheaper than the contacts for this type of crimper. Right here we have some sensors and a 60 minus two trigger wheel. Now you might be wondering if I bought this or whatever, no, this actually came out Hoovy's 2017 uh, Range Rover Evoque. So the old engine had this on there and this is actually very useful. The 60 minus two seems to be a very good trigger wheel for, you know, for projects and stuff like that. It's also pretty common. It's a, it's a very well supported pattern and it was there. Uh, Wizard machined it out for me. So we're going to see if we need it, if we can use it. And also the sensor. This is the crank sensor from that Evoke as well. We're gonna use that as well. Now over here, we have the knock sensor. This also came out of the Evoke. Now you can't really use any type of knock sensor. This is actually a narrow band knock sensor that's specific for the bore size on the Evoke. Now the bore size, the cylinder bore size on the Evoke is 84 millimeters. And guess what size is the bore size for this car? 84 millimeters, so that means that we can use this if we can mount it on the block. Over here we have the map sensor. This is a three bar map sensor. We only really need a two because we're not planning on going that high, but obviously it's gonna work. It's just a three bar. So this will work perfectly for our application here. Also came out of the Evoke. So over here we have these two massive coils. Now these actually came out of the Ferrari 308, Car Wizards 308. Now, whenever they switch over to the Holly, they decided to remove these and put them in a box. And I told Wizard, hey, can I have them? And now we're gonna be using it on the Fiat. Now, these are obviously very powerful coils. They're probably more than what we need for this car. But again, they're free. We don't have to buy them, so we're gonna use them. These wires also came out of the uh, Ferrari 308. And we're gonna try to see if we can use those, salvage what we can. The less money we spend, the better. The theme of the project is budget friendly because we're not going to dump so much money on this car. It's, it's never going to be worth the money that we're going to put in it. So budget friendly is the theme. Now over here, 
this is a fuel pressure regulator. Now this fuel pressure regulator is one from Amazon. It was like 30 bucks if I'm not mistaken, and it was bought for the 308, but it didn't fit. So Wizard decided to get another, an Aeromotive actually, it was smaller. But anyways, this one, uh, it was basically sitting on shelf and I told Wizard, hey, let's go ahead and use it on the Fiat. It's another free part, we're gonna need it. So it's good that we have one. Now over here, we have some more sensors. We got a coolant temp sensor. I don't know if we're gonna use it or reuse one on the car, but we have it, it's free. It came out of the 308. Same thing with this intake temperature sensor, you know, came out of the 308, we might use it. And then this little guy right here, this is actually mine. So it's an AM uh, map sensor as well that, you know, if that one doesn't work or we can't make it fit, then we can use this one. This is a 3.5 bar map sensor and we have it as a spare just in case it was laying around, might as well use it. And uh, yeah, now moving over here, we have TXO wire. Now, I don't know if we're gonna use this one in particular cause Wizard has some uh, TXO wire in, uh, in a box over there. He might want us to use that one instead of this stuff. But uh, yeah, this is about, I believe is $50 worth of wire. And it's only $50 because all the shipping and not being a member of the place where I bought this stuff, uh, you know, kind of raised the price a little bit. You, It's a place where you buy in quantity and whenever you buy small quantities, you get penalized. It's just the way, the way it is. So these right here are the main reason I'm doing this project. Now you guys have seen on my previous video that my buddy has a S14 that he also used a link ECU, a link standalone ECU for his build. Now, before I continue, I am not sponsored by Link, not yet, unfortunately. I wish I was because I really like their products and uh, I really wanna use them more and more and more. Now, as you can see, this is the ECU. It's actually very small. As you can see, it fits in my hand, so it's extremely small. Now, this would be more than enough for what we're doing here on this car. We also have a bracket, okay? So you're supposed to bolt this on where you want it and then the ECU just clicks on there and holds it in place. I'm not gonna do that because it's a pain in the butt to remove. It's supposed to be a pain in the butt to remove. You don't want that thing falling while you're doing pulls. So this next box is actually a CAN Lambda. So the CAN Lambda is basically our wideband. This is what we're gonna be using to be able to monitor the exhaust coming out of the car so we can tune the fuel properly. Now, as you can see, we have the module right here and the connection for the O2 sensor. And then this connection goes to the ECU. Now this right here is the next thing that I want to talk about. This is how I size the turbo. Now we're not going to go through the whole equation because I suck at explaining and math is not my forte. Now I have learned these equations from my buddy, Eric. He's the one that's been teaching me and I've been practicing. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and kind of run through them very quickly here. And then we're going to focus on these two numbers right here. And yes, so let's go ahead and, and just do this one real quick and then we'll move over to that one. Now, as you can see, the equation starts as a 1.8 liter. Now we need to convert that into how much air can this engine actually move? And we've got a couple of correction factors here and there. I'm not gonna go into detail on those, uh, at least not yet, maybe uh, separate videos for those. But uh, you know, this engine being a little bit, not, you know, 90% efficient, not the most efficient engine, it kind of brings down the cubic feet per minute a little bit. And then this is a correction factor from a dyno for air mass or whatever. I don't know how to explain that either, at least not yet. Now over here, we can see that this engine can move 13.03 pounds per minute and then time nine, nine horsepower per pound of air mass move. Now, as you can see, it comes out to 117 horsepower. Now, if you look up the stock horsepower for this engine is 118 horsepower. So we are not far off. We're about 98% accurate, 99% accurate. So that's pretty good. Now we move over to this table. Now our plan is to put 15 pounds of boost. Now, sorry for the focus craziness of this camera, uh, but right here, we have 15 pounds of boost. Now we do the whole equation to come up with these two numbers right here. Now this number right here, this says 26.5. This is how much the engine at this pressure ratio, right? This would be our boost. Uh, how much air is that engine actually moving at full RPM uh, at that pressure ratio? So we can see it moves 26.5 pounds per minute. Now this number, we're gonna use it to be able to look at a compressor map. The compressor map is how you pick the turbos for your engine so they can perform at the highest efficiency possible. I'm gonna show you in the compressor map where these numbers actually go so you can map your compressor. Now down here, you can see we have 117 horsepower times that pressure ratio that we calculated over here. And theoretically, 
this car can make as much as 238 horsepower on 15 pounds of boost. So right here we have a compressor map for the turbocharger model GT2554R. Now if you guys remember, our pressure ratio that we got over there was 2.03, so right about here, we don't need to be exact, right? So we can see that that's our line for our pressure ratio. Now we still need the line that goes from the bottom from our Y axis, if I'm not mistaken, uh, to see where it lands on this compressor map. Now our corrected airflow pounds per minute was that number that 26.5. And you can see we have 25, so we can say right around here is 26. And then we need to go all the way up where that two is. So you can see we're right there on the line, on this line called, eh, called the choke line. Uh, at least that's what I've been told. Uh, I'm still learning this stuff, but this right here is gonna be your turbo choke line and we're right there at the choke line. So that means that we are using the entire turbo or the entire compressor, we're using it at its mass maximum efficiency. So you really wanna be here in this choke line whenever you size a turbo because whenever you shift, the RPM slows down and obviously the turbo starts to slow down as well, doesn't have enough boost. So you'll actually start seeing the, the line start going back because you're losing a little bit of that pressure right and then when you give it gas again it starts to go up now right here if you see in the middle this is the the most efficient part of the turbo right so whenever you shift you go into that the most efficient part and then you go back up and when you shift you go back down and then you go back up and you really want to do it this way so you're always in that efficiency area of the turbo now let's say that we had a pressure ratio of two but we were only flowing about 20 pounds per minute, that means we would be in the middle. So when you, when you shift, you start going into this area where it's not gonna be as efficient as here. So you really wanna go over and then back, over and back. So that makes it a really nice turbo and it's a really responsive turbo and all that stuff. Now, I went through all this, but we're not gonna buy this turbo. Why? Because this turbo is $900. It is an incredible turbo but it's way too much money for this project. So we decided to get something which we think might be close. We don't know because that turbo doesn't have a compressor map and it's gonna be like an eBay turbo, Chinese turbo, and I think it's about $200. So again, budget friendly build. We can't use this fancy turbo, maybe in the future, but uh, yeah, right now we only use this for the learning experience. Now that we kind of saw how we size the turbo, uh, I wanna talk about what do we need to convert this to EFI? This is gonna be the last thing really on, on just writing and talking and stuff like that. We're not really gonna do much on the car today because I am i don't have any parts, unfortunately. I don't have any brakes, I don't have anything. There's not much to do. We'll do a quick look around, but that's gonna be about it for this video. Uh, so I apologize, but we got all this stuff out of the way and kind of painted a, a picture, a, a path of how we're gonna do this, uh, how we're gonna convert this car into a turbo car. Now we're gonna start with an intake. So this intake is from a 1980s Fiat 124. Those came with a Bosch fuel injection and the intake is gonna be perfect for our setup here. We're also gonna need a fuel pump, a 90 PSI fuel pump, because now we're running about um, 45 uh, PSI base pressure and then for every pound of boost, it raises one pound uh, of PSI uh, for fuel pressure. So we're gonna need some room there. So a 90, a 80 PSI would be perfect for our setup. Now, injectors, we're gonna need way bigger injectors than what that Bosch fuel system uh, from the 1980s Fiat can supply. We're gonna need a lot more fuel. So we need some, th these are a little bit bigger than what we need, but uh, we actually have all the data for these injectors. My buddy sent them into MoTeC and they were able to give them all the data that they needed. This is not very common to do, uh, but I do have that information. So we're gonna go ahead and use these. These are incredibly cheap compared to other injectors that we get that already have the data in them. They tend to be performance injectors and they tend to cost a lot more. Uh, we also need an intercooler. Okay, so we're gonna show you in the front where we're gonna mount it. Um, it's a 16 by eight intercooler, at least the one that I'm planning on using. It's about 200 bucks as well, so pretty cheap. Uh, we are gonna need aluminum pipes and couplers to be able to hook that intercooler to the turbo and the intake. And then over here, we're gonna need a better fan. The fan that's in there, it's not gonna be enough to be able to cool everything properly. And then right here, our cheap T25 turbocharger. Now, I believe CX Racing sells a turbo that's gonna match, uh, well, not perfectly, but it's gonna be good enough for our purposes here. And it's about 200 bucks. So 
pretty much as much as the intercooler, which is ridiculous. I don't even know how that thing is going to hold up, but whatever. It's going to be 200 bucks. We're going to put it on. We're going to get that one, hopefully. Now, this one I'm really excited about. So a Nissan crank angle sensor unit. So we are going to put this on the distributor, and this is how we're going to get our crank and our cam signal to be able to run full sequential fuel and ignition. There is something else that I'm going to do to this car. It's going to be a secret feature that I'm only going to reveal on the last video of this car, which is going to be on Wizard's channel. I'm going to save the feature for him. He doesn't know what the feature is going to be, so we'll see if he's surprised. Now, I know that on Wizard's video, you already kind of saw what's wrong with the car, but here I'm going to talk about some modifications that we need to do down here. Now, not much back here other than fixing the drive shaft and stuff like that. We're not going to be modifying much other than the exhaust, obviously. Uh, we're pretty sure we're not going to be able to reuse the old exhaust, but we'll see on that one. Uh, it's not really the problem uh, with the exhaust. It's going to be the problem of welding everything over there. Just to keep it cheap, we might have to just straight pipe it, but we're not sure yet. Now, yes, other than servicing the car, making sure it has fresh fluids, brakes, and stuff like that, like I said, we need to modify a few things. And one of them is going to be the oil pan. So we're going to have to add a drain bag from the turbo to the oil pan. Now, we need that, obviously, because we're going to have an oil feed going to the turbo and then back down. Now, coolant, we're probably going to do that one, too, but I'm not 100% sure on that one. We might have to skip coolant and find a way to keep it cool other than using coolant. Over here, we have this big opening. Now, either I install a intercooler that's external, which I don't really want to do that. I want to keep it hidden, or I can install it down there, and I'm going to bring the car down and show you a little bit better in there. But we have an intercooler, or at least the one that we're planning to buy, that the inlet and the outlet are on one side, and we're going to be able to route all the piping out on this area because we seem to have more room over here. And then I'll show you in the engine bay how that's roughly going to look like. Now let's go ahead and bring it about halfway down so I can show you in the front. And then I'm going to ask you guys a question about the bumpers. So let's go ahead. Okay, so this is what I wanted to show you. As you can see, we have a nice big opening here, or at least big enough. And the intercooler actually fits in there. I have kind of roughly measured 16 by 8, 16.5 by 8 is roughly what it measures. And like I said, it has the inlet and the outlet on one side. So it'll make it easier, and I'll show you why here in a second. But basically, they're going to go out and then into the car but you can see we have a nice opening there and that should work nicely and it'll be tucked so you can't see it now the other question that i have for you guys and i think i might just do a poll on this uh, on youtube i think i can do that i'm not 100 percent sure but should we get rid of the bumpers so if you look at the side profile of the car you can see it has that nice curve right there and obviously these are us bumper so they have to put these bumpers on there but uh if we can just cut them out and just let the shape of the car just kind of what i think would be intended i don't know honestly but i'll leave that to you guys uh vote if you're going to cut them off or if you want to leave them on so here at the engine bay the i would be cutting two holes to run the two pipes from that intercooler the intercooler would be over here and we would run the pipes right through here so we would have one going to the turbo and then the other one would go up and over to the intake because the intake actually goes from the head kind of curves around and then you have the throttle body right here so we can put our hose right here our aluminum pipe and then run it all the way over here that would keep it as simple as possible because if we try to go in on that area there's a little bit it's a little bit crowded over there so I'm hoping that it'll be a lot easier to go from here. And if you look at the 1981 or 82 Fiat 124 Turbo, it has a very similar setup. You know, uh, it has it doesn't have an intercooler, I don't think. It looks like it's just not even not even intercooled. Honestly, it has this weird pipe here. Maybe it cools. The, I don't know. All I know is that it has from the turbo to the intake, and it just has a, a, a pipe here, a chamber, or maybe a heat exchanger, water water to air. I'm not sure. I'm hoping that we can just do it that way. There is an option for us to do a water water cooled heat exchanger uh, as well, but I'm still exploring the prices because it's a little bit more expensive. It requires a, a pump, a reservoir, uh, another radiator because it has it has to be a separate circuit to keep it cooler. So I'm not 100% sure if we're gonna go with the uh, heat exchanger. Now that really wraps up the second video on the Turbo Fiat. Now, yes, I understand there's not much action going on on this video, but I don't have any parts. 
and I don't really want to start messing uh, with the engine right now, taking stuff apart to maybe start maybe making a wiring harness or whatever, because I need that engine to run uh, by the time we fix the brakes, the drive shaft, because I really want to test drive it, see if there's any weak points before we rip all the stuff on the engine out and we EFI and turbo the car, doubling the horsepower. We probably want to make sure that those brakes, drive shaft, suspension is all good before we will go ahead and do that. Now, definitely on the next video, there is going to be some work on here. We're going to be getting those brakes. We're, we're shopping for parts. We're going to get everything in. I'm going to do a update on the new parts that we got, uh, maybe tools that we needed. Maybe I'm not sure yet, but there's definitely going to be action on the next video. Now, of course, if you guys are enjoying the series, uh, please go ahead, leave a like, a comment, subscribe. Uh, share with anybody who might be interested if any sponsor wants to get in on this I don't know if you want to but there's definitely some contact information down there I would love to work with somebody it'd be extremely cool to maybe put some crazy stuff on the car now as always I really appreciate you guys watching the video supporting the channel and on that note uh, I will see you on the next video